In this question, a student is on her way to catch the bus, moving down the road in her wheelchair at a speed of 2.1 meters per second. She sees the bus approaching and hurries to catch it, speeding up uniformly over a distance of 2.41, sorry, 24.1 meters and a time of 9.77 seconds. Use radians as a standard unit for angles. Okay, so in this question, we're provided with all of our known variables in a linear quantity format. So rather than being given the angular speed of our wheels, we're given the linear speed that she's traveling at. And rather than giving the angular displacement that the wheels travel through, we are given the, uh, the linear distance that the wheels cover. Now the question wants us to be able to figure out angular acceleration and final angular speed eventually. So we're going to need to first convert any linear values or linear quantities into angular quantities and then use those in our equations down in the bottom right in order to figure out our unknown angular quantities. It's really important that when we're putting things into our equation, we're always using all angular quantities or that we're using our, uh, the linear kinematics equation with all linear quantities, but we can't mix and match. We've got to just use one or the other. So in this question, first, we're going to convert any linear quantities into angular quantities, and then we're going to put them into our angular kinematics equations. Some questions will be the other way around. They'll provide the angular quantities. You'll do the calculations first, and then it will ask you to convert those into linear quantities at the end. But I recommend for these questions doing all calculations using angular quantities with the angular kinematics equations. So let's get started then with step one, which is going to be converting our initial angular speed and our angular displacement from the linear speed provided here and the linear displacement found here. So to do that, we're going to be using our three conversion equations, which I've just boxed down in the bottom right. These convert between our linear and our angular quantities. So first we're looking at the speed. So that's going to be this equation, V equals R times omega. We're trying to find the angular speed, omega. So we're going to divide both sides by r, which will cancel out on the right to give us our omega equals the linear speed divided by the radius of rotation. So now we can just go ahead and put in our numbers. The linear speed was 2.1 meters per second divided by the radius of rotation, which was 0 0.581 meters, shown on the diagram. If we divide those, we will get our angular velocity of 3.61 radians per second. So we can fill that out here. Okay, the next question asks for the wheel's angular displacement. We know the distance that the wheel has covered, that's the x, and we're trying to find the theta, the angular displacement. So we're using that first equation in the list. Again, we're looking for the angular displacement, so we're going to have to divide both sides by r to get that on its own. The r's will cancel. And to get our angular displacement, all we need to do is divide our linear displacement, which was 24.1 meters, divided by our radius of rotation, which was 0 0.581 meters from our diagram. That will get us a angular displacement of 41.5 radians, which we can fill in our answer box over here. Awesome, okay, so we found our initial angular speed, we found our angular displacement, and the question provides us with the time. So those are our three known variables. So now let's go ahead and write out a list of all, our all, all of our variables. So we have initial angular speed, 
we have final angular speed, we have angular displacement, we have time, and we have angular acceleration. And let's just write out which of those we already know and what we're trying to find. So the question tells us the linear speed initially. We use that to calculate the initial angular speed of 3.61 radians per second. The final angular speed is something we're gonna be finding out eventually. We also know the wheel's angular displacement, which we calculated was 41.5 radians. And from the question we're given the time is 9.77 seconds. So those are our three known variables. It wants us to find the angular acceleration and it wants us to find the final angular speed. So first let's find our angular acceleration. I'm gonna make that my question mark. And for now, the final angular speed is my unknown. So I'm gonna put a big X there and I'm gonna go through and solve this using an equation from the bottom right. Remember that top equation only works for constant angular speed. And here we have a acceleration happening. So it's not gonna be that equation, it's gonna be one of the other ones. We want the equation that doesn't have final angular velocity, which is gonna be this equation here. So our equation is theta is equal to omega zero times T plus half alpha T squared. And we're gonna to need to arrange this equation to get the alpha on its own. So we've got quite a few steps of algebra to do here. First, we're gonna subtract the omega naught times the t from both sides. That will get us theta minus omega naught times t on the left is equal to half times alpha times t squared on the right. Now to get rid of that half on the right, we can multiply both sides by two. That will get the half to cancel out. And finally, to get the alpha on its own, we can divide both sides by T squared. Now my T squareds will cancel out on the right. And I've got my equation for alpha, which I can just put my numbers into. So we've got two multiplied by in the parentheses, the angular displacement, which was 41.5 from my variables list, minus initial angular velocity, which we calculated was 3.61, times the time, which was 9.77, divided by time squared, so 9.77 squared. That gets me out a value for alpha, the angular acceleration of 0 0.129 radians per second squared. Now, when I calculated that value, I saved my previous calculations in my calculator and I used those unrounded numbers in my calculation to get this value. If I had put in just these rounded values, I would have got a very slightly different number. That will still be graded correctly on positive physics because it will still be within the tolerance range. However, in order to get the most accurate possible answer, anything we've already calculated should be saved in our calculator and then used in our later equations for the highest possible accuracy. Okay, so our angular acceleration we found was 0.129 radians per second squared. Our last step now is to find the final angular speed. So this is now our question mark, the omega f. Now, same as usual, we can now pick actually any of these equations since our alpha is now a known variable. We just calculated it to be 0 0.129 radians per second squared.
However, just in case I happen to calculate alpha wrong and I haven't checked it yet, it's safest to use the equation that doesn't include the alpha. So because of that, I'm going to select that second equation here to calculate out my omega f. And I'm just gonna erase some stuff to make some space for us to do this last part of the calculation. So we'll write out our equation. Theta is equal to half times omega zero plus omega f times t. Now I wanna get omega f on its own eventually. So I need to get rid of the half. I'm gonna multiply both sides by two to do that. And I need to get rid of the t. I'm gonna divide both sides by t to do that. So that means my half and my two will cancel out and my t's will cancel out. So my final thing to get the omega f on its own is just to subtract omega zero from both sides. So that gets me two times theta divided by t minus omega zero equals omega f. So now my calculation, my equation is solved. I can go ahead and put in my numbers. We've got two multiplied by theta, which was 41.5 radians, divided by the time, which was 9.77 seconds. And then I subtract from all of that my initial angular velocity, which was 3.61 radians per second. That's going to get me out a final angular velocity of 4.88 radians per second, which I'm going to fill out in our answer box here. So hopefully you can see that this problem works exactly the same as the complete problems one and the preparation problem. The only difference is that we had to do some conversions first between the angular and the linear quantities. For these questions, I recommend always using the angular quantities in the angular kinematics equations, which means if you're provided with linear quantities in the question, you first need to convert those all to angular quantities before you do your calculation. On the other hand, if the question provides angular quantities, but asks you to find linear quantities, first use the angular quantities in the angular kinematics equations to find your unknowns, and then use those conversion equations to convert those angular quantities into the linear ones for your final answer.